A while ago, I played through a Mario game as Pepino Spaghetti. And honestly, it went exactly as you'd expect. Everything Mario could do, Pepino could do better, faster, and with the grace of 15 howlitzer missiles pointed at Bowser's lonely home. Poor guy. I'm starting to realize that Bowser may not be the bad guy. Pepino is in fact so supernaturally powerful that he just got promoted to an SCP, which is just as impressive as it is terrifying. In that first two hour playthrough of collecting 70 stars and making Bowser's castle look like the equivalent of a preschool jungle gym, we managed to answer a question as old as time itself. Yes, he can beat this game harder than the eggs in a frittata al tartufo. I know I butchered that. I could just tell I butchered that. But though our question was answered, our appetite sated in our video, Doing numbers, thank you for that by the way. I found myself unable to sleep. Sure, we may have beaten the game, but what good was our limitless potential if not tested? We may have used an F1 race car, but we only got to drive it around the parking lot of a Walmart. And that's when I realized that there was one final question that needed to be answered. A question that may change the faith of humanity and also cost me dozens of hours out of my precious life. How fast can Popino Spaghetti beat a Mario game? I knew that I had my work cut out for me because I was gonna have to deal with one monumental issue. I'm no good at Mario 64, so if your sights are set high for this gameplay, I'm gonna need you to crank that neck down about 50 degrees. But I will never back down from a challenge, unless it includes like cardio or stairs. Our first mission was simple. Find a way to lower the amount of stars required to beat this game. I know that all of my viewers are gaming virtuosos, which is probably why you watch me in the first place, but let me explain this really quick for the people in the back. Like if your mom or significant other can hear me in the same room. Hello. In Mario 64, there are three main categories of speedrunning, all varying in difficulty and length, 120 stars being the most difficult. Making players map out routes to collect every single thing in this game, which is just insane and takes about 40 IQ points more than I currently have available. So we're definitely not yeah. doing that. 70 stars only collects a little over half the content in the game, which is a lot more manageable, but still a tall order for a guy whose crowning speedrunning achievement is an eight minute mile time, which is average. And finally, there's 16 stars, which takes the least amount of time and execution out of the big three, but it requires two somewhat buggy tricks that I'm not even sure Pepino can execute. Stop. We'll open that door when we get to it. For now, let's jump into the most important part, coming up with a path. As Pepino, I wanted to do things a little differently. I mean, sure, I can just look at what stars are collected in the 16 star world record, but Pepino and Mario aren't cut from the same cloth. I don't even think they're the same species at this point. Also, to be canonically accurate, Pepino isn't going to dance and leave the stage every single single time he collects a star. It's not in his nature, he is here for business and business only. Meaning that our routes are going to be based on which stages I think I can collect the most amount of stars in without ever having to leave the level. The first star door out of three requires eight stars to open. So within the first five stages of the game, we were gonna have to find a path that gives us eight stars as fast as possible while also opening the least amount of doors to skip this slow ass star animation. Like hurry it up, man. First up, we got Bob on Battlefield. Even the Mushroom Kingdom knows war. Even Mario remembers the echoes of bloodshed. Since we're trying to open as few doors as possible, realistically we're trying to get all eight stars within two or three levels. And we're also not going to overcommit on stars that seem promising, but end up taking too much resources and energy. Think of us as a Hollywood agency, if you will. Knowing that speed was our game, King Babam was out of the question, because fighting him just takes too long. And Koopa the Quick was out of the question too, because look at him. He's a turtle. Turtles are always slow. Hold on, I, I, I gotta answer this. Hello? Really? Cancelled? Specious? All I said was that all turtles are slow because they are. Not helping my case. Oh, someone else is calling. Give me a sec. 
double cancel. After a little bit of testing, I found the most optimal route for the three stars that we'll collect on the first stage. The red coin star, the sky block star, and the chain chomp star. If I simply ran towards the first two red coins and super jumped, I'd be able to collect the sky star and the third red coin. Then I'd fall onto the chain chomp pole, collect my fourth red coin, ground pound the pole a few times so that the chain chomp can leave, and while that animation was going off, I could collect the final four red coins, the coin star, head back into the cage star, and quit out of the level. And all of that in about 90 seconds, give or take. To select our next stage, we had to do a bit of experimenting. Realistically, we were going to need a stage that we could collect five stars in, or a stage where we could collect three super fast stars and the other two somewhere else. And unfortunately, out of the three full stages that were available, none of them were going to give us five stars without a reset. So now I had to find out which one of these stages can give me the most stars at the fastest rate. Cool Cool Mountain was out of the question, because a lot of the stars on that level rely on an NPC talking to you or doing something, which left us a choice between Jolly Roger Bay and Thwomp's Fortress, both of which had some advantages and disadvantages. Let's start off in Jolly Roger Bay. Jolly Roger Bay is a water stage, but Pepino swims faster than most bullets can travel, so that wasn't really a big issue. The three stars in this stage would be the yellow block star, which Pepino can easily climb to, the star in the cave, where you had to touch all four treasure chests, and the sunken ship star, where you have to wait for the eel to leave, and then you can go in, drain the water, and hit the block. Fortunately, Pepino can punch underwater, so he could skip that entire draining section altogether. When done correctly, some of my best attempts only took me about 80 seconds total, which is fast. But still, waiting for the eel to leave and also having to touch all of those chests, it sunk a lot of time. N no pun intended. So I decided to investigate Thwomp's fortress to see if we could move a little bit faster. The stars to collect here would be the red coin star, the sky cage star, and the hidden star on the back of the stage. If I planned my red coin path correctly, it was possible to collect all of the coins while also getting the two bonus stars and rounding back to the beginning so that I can collect the star alongside the final red coin. And though Thwomp's fortress was a little bit harder to execute, it was a lot faster, with a lot of my attempts taking less than a minute overall. This leaves us with six out of the eight stars needed to open that first star door. Now we just needed to find two more stars as fast as we could. And that's when it hit me. There's a secret slide up here that just gives you a star for getting to the bottom and another one for getting to the bottom fast, which is perfect and it only took less than 15 seconds. And with that, we hit the eight stars that were necessary to open the star door. But here's where things get a little bit more complicated. We actually needed nine stars before the next section in order to be efficient. And you'll find out why very soon. For now, I just need to find another star in the stages we have available before we keep going. And that's when I remembered that every Bowser stage has a red coin star available. So after a tiny bit of execution hiccups, we learn the route for Bowser's red coin star, get our first key, and then head over to the next section with the nine stars we needed. Now we just needed six more stars before the next Bowser fight. Out of the four stages readily available in the next section, we had to find the most efficient way to get six stars. Big Boo's haunt was out of the question because it took too long to get in the stage, let alone collect most of the stars available. Shifting Sandland had two stars readily available, but the rest of them were kind of a chore and out of the way, leaving us with Hazy Maze Cave and Lethal Lava Land. Hazy Maze Cave had two symbol stars to collect in the beginning, and also an invisible toad right outside of the stage that just gave you a star if you talked to him, which would leave us with only three more stars to collect on any other level. But then I remembered something important about Lethal Lava Land. You see, Lethal Lava Land was a very special stage for this challenge, because not only was it relatively small, but it also didn't require any resets to collect all six of its stars. Meaning that with the right pathing, we could just collect all six of the stars here in Lethal Lava Land and skip a second stage altogether, which is much faster by a pretty large margin. Since we put that little bit of extra effort to have nine stars before we got here, this could be the final stage to collect all of the stars that we needed. And with our 15 stars finally mapped out, 
we still had two big problems. The second star door and the third star door slash staircase. Second star door. The reason why we needed 15 stars in the first place was to get this little bunny rabbit to spawn so we could do our first glitch. You're supposed to crawl into the right crevice of the door while holding the bunny rabbit and then you crouch as Mario which gets you through. Then Mario turns around and grabs the bunny rabbit allowing him to take it onto the other side. Once the bunny gets through that first door you could basically basically do the crouch trick again at the second star door and then go fight Bowser. The problem here is that the first trick did not work on Pepino. He doesn't have a simple punch grab like Mario does. He has a dash grab, meaning he always has to dash in order to grab anything. So in this section, he couldn't just turn around and grab the bunny. But fortunately for us, Pepino is a monster. So instead of putting the bunny rabbit down, Pepino punts it as hard as he can. So if I can just aim the punt exactly at the crevice that Mario normally squeaks through, Pepino can actually punt the bunny through the door. Then you take the bunny on the other side and crouch through the star door like normal. After that, you get the star on the submarine level to unlock the Bowser stage, defeat Bowser 2, and head to the final section in the game. I know that kicking that rabbit may have reminded you of FIFA, but this next section is gonna get messy. Hmm? No? Okay, whatever. In order to get through the final star door, you have to be LJ. To put it simply, if you backwards long jump, there's no limit to the speed that you could generate as Mario. So if you do it on a staircase, you can go so fast that Mario can glitch through the door by being on one side of it in one frame and the other side of it the next. Then once you get through that door, you use the same trick at the end of the staircase and there's the final level. Both of these tricks are essential to do a 16 star run. And unfortunately, as fast as Pepino is, he has a limit. All this talk about being unstoppable only to be stopped by a simple door with a low resolution image of a star on it? And that's when it all hit me. Pepino was no god. He was merely created in the reflection of his image. That's it. If Pepino was created out of the image of Wario, and Wario is a reflection of Mario, what? Then that must mean in his roots, in his coding, in his DNA. There it is! Pepino could backwards long jump! You could actually just disable Pepino's moveset if you're wondering what happened. And with a bit of practice and varying degrees of success, we cross the star door, make it up the endless staircase, and get to the final Bowser stage, which is pretty easy. And now with our route set, with hours of experimentation and practice, it was finally time to put it all together. I did a bunch of runs, some way better than others, some with different routes. I even had a run where I was doing exceptionally well, but then I spent 10 minutes alone trying to do the backwards long jump stairs. But I want to show you the run that changed me as a person. The run that became both the best run I've ever done and also the worst run of my life. You'll find out why. We start our run the only way that Pepino knows how. Fast. You may notice that the speedrun timer is a little bit lower than it should be at this point, and that's because Pepino doesn't care about an intro cutscene. He's here for business and speed. We sprint into Bob on Battlefield and execute our plan flawlessly. And by that, I mean with a decent amount of flaws. We gain speed instantly by doing a grab dash into a crouch, collect the first two red coins, super jump into the sky island, and grab our first star from the block. Then we get the tree coin, ground pound the chain chomps pull to free him and get our fourth red coin, and as he's doing the skipping away animation, we collect the last four coins and the red coin star. Then we simply jump over the gap, grab the cage star, and exit out of the level. And we finished one out of four stages in under 90 nice. seconds. We sprint into Womp's Fortress and immediately climb the walls to get our first two red coins. We loop around the back and collect the other two coins, grab the hidden star under the pole platform, climb the side of the wall to get to the top, and then blast into the cage star. We collect two island red coins, get the thwomp coin, and collect the entrance coin in order to grab the star as it spawns. 
dollars. And we were now done with two out of four main stages in under three minutes. We rush into the slide and haul it to the finish line as fast as we can. And even though it's not that fast, we collect both ending stars, which gets us to eight out of the nine stars we need in this section. And now it was time for our hardest stage in the run, Bowser 1 and his red coins. Remember how I said I was trying to avoid difficult to execute sections? Well, I couldn't avoid this one. It was mathematically the fastest place I could get the last star I need before Lethal Lava Land. So I bumbled around the stage like a baby deer and almost took an entire minute to get this one star alone. We defeated Bowser and now we only had one final stage left and two more Bowser fights. But this next stage was gonna be six whole stars. Oh boy. We run forward and immediately super jump over the gate to get star one. We sprint to the red coin star, which is convenient because they're all right next to each other. And then we fight not one, but two separate bosses on this stage. A bully and a bunch of tiny bullies, which turn into a bully. Yeah, real creative. Afterwards, we run into the active volcano and wall climb the first wall to skip the entire section. And then we jump over this tiny gap to get our second to last star and end the stage. Now, all we had to do was three separate glitches. And some of these have taken me over 15 minutes to do correctly sometimes. We kick the bunny through the door so fast that PETA can't even file a complaint. And then we crouch by the star door to sneak through and collect the submarine star that we need to unlock Bowser 2. Then we do a Papino skip in the beginning by jumping this corner and a second Papino skip by jumping here. We sprint into Bowser, beat him to death, head to our final zone, and now it was time for a trick that sometimes took longer than an episode of SpongeBob. But by the grace of our speedrunning god summoning Salt himself, I am able to nail this trick in under a minute. We get to the endless staircase and again, I get immediately lucky. And now it was time for the final stage and fight of our run. And I was completely shocked because I got there in under 12 minutes. All I had to do was skip through the stage and defeat one more Bowser. And if I could just pull those two things off, we could beat this game in, in around 13 minutes. That is actually insane. We sprint to the first jump, mess up our second jump, but somehow bring it back, and then succeed in our third jump strat to get to the final Bowser fight at 12.38. Everything was going so smooth. I was about to prove that Peppino was the greatest Italian man who has ever lived. Because as we all know, Pizza Tower is an autobiography. We stumble around and get our first throw and at this point I'm already writing my acceptance speech for the Oscars. We grab Bowser and land our second throw and all I needed to do now was one more very simple throw to have my name etched into the history of gaming. And finally we do our third throw and end up short of the target, meaning that we just lost a bunch of time. Still, I only needed one more throw and we'd be faster than the Mario 64 world record. I make another mistake, get hit and nearly die, but I wasn't gonna let it all fall apart. Not now, but then Bowser stands at the exact edge of the platform, making it physically impossible for Peppino to grab him cause all he has is a grab dash. And after waiting for him to slow squeak out of the corner, I attempt to grab Bowser's tail, get hit with no health, and alongside my chances at creating history. I am tragically killed. But still, it only threw me right outside of the boss fight. So all I had to do was perform the second time and I might still be able to salvage things. I land my first throw, I land my second throw, and once again, on my third throw, I am just short. And after fumbling twice, like, like a, a complete, complete idiot, idiot, we managed to defeat Bowser and beat the game at 15.03. Sure, it was fast, and I had a lot of fun mapping out a route for Pizza Tower 64, but at the end of the day, this will only serve as a dark reminder that I was mere inches away from greatness. So, can you speedrun a Mario game as Pepino Spaghetti? I mean, kind of, but you do have to disable his moves in order to BLJ. I hope you enjoyed the video. I saw the hundreds of comments on the last one asking me to do a speedrun, so you know I had to do it for the team. If any of you are Mario 64 speedrunners or like Pizza Tower or both, I highly suggest that you try to do a 16 star speedrun of this because it's very fun. And also send them to me on Twitter because I would like to go over all of them and see the tech that people can create when they're not bad. Now I know some of you may be thinking that the BLJ section was kind of a cop out and honestly, it, it kind of is. So I'm gonna put an offer on the table. If you wanna see me attempt to learn and map out a 70 star run of this game? Let me know in the comment section below. And just like last time, if enough people want it, I'll be sure to do it for the band. If you thought this video was interesting, please subscribe or I'll put an endless staircase in your house.
Here's a video where I tried to beat a Mario and Sonic game at the same time, and I'm sure if you like this one, you'll enjoy that one because it's the same style. And here's a video where I played a bunch of Mario Kart clones. And honestly, I'm still shocked that some of those exist. I'm Scooch, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Love ya!